no apologies for going into places where only spirit to spirit works. Father, to the mature, we speak a higher wisdom. And Lord, I have to believe that there's a generation that want to hear higher wisdom. They want to hear what you have, what you have freely given us in the gospel. The gospel of life and immortality. So thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Oh. We're going to do a court case tonight on sickness. I'm going to show you. I've actually found some powerful scriptures. There are actually court cases in scripture for body regeneration. And I'm going to come into those in a minute. But there are actually, I met a woman in Morningstar that had died twice of two, terminal, two different terminal illnesses. And both times when she was with Yahweh, she was told that she had the power of life in her. And the choice. I present before you a choice. Choose life. So she actually came back both times completely cured of two terminal diseases. And I met her at morning, so I've got a photo with her. But she raised a friend from the dead when she had a terminal illness. And I've actually found a scripture. I didn't know this at the time. I found a scripture that says you can regenerate your body three times. I'm sure you can regenerate it more than that. But I'll, I'll read it for you tonight. So some new scriptures. But I'm aware, like, God's doing stuff that's restoring awe and wonder. And we must let that trembling happen in. There's a resistance to trembling, but just let the trembling happen in. Because God is kind of like us, but not like us. And his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And scripture itself testifies that there are things in his mind that haven't entered into the heart of man. But are now being revealed by the Spirit. And it's a shock. It comes as a shock when you start to realize that God wants to do things beyond revival, beyond the charismatic movement, beyond the prophetic movement, where he begins to actually touch the genome of the human body. Yeah. Now, like I said in the, in the worship, it's really interesting that the human body is the only thing in creation that bears God's fingerprint. He spoke everything else into being, but he touched us. He touched me. <laughs> so you actually sitting there right now have got the fingerprint of the divine resonating in your genetic structure. That he actually touched you and that original genome is in you. In fact, you contain, this is a fascinating fact, but I watched a, 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 a science documentary on genetics, and it was a multi-part series, that you actually contain with you, you contain in you the genetic structures of all the stuff that's in the earth. Inside you, they can take out the genome of a mushroom, frog, a tree, it's all in you. So, you know, the Jewish, the Jews teach that when it says, let us make man, there was a council. And the council was with God and all of creation, that all of creation was allowed to put its DNA in humanity so that it could have an inheritance in humanity. So humanity is actually the, the, the one that all of creation looks for an inheritance in. In fact, because Adam fell, God made creation fall so that you'd still be the highest being. It was subject to frustration and all of it was lowered so that you could still be in the position of responsibility for it. So creation fell as a byproduct of God honoring humanity. Wow. That's huge. <laughs> so you're even made of an unusual matter, like I talked of before. Even in Jewish culture, they don't know where the earth came from. It says it was without form or void, and the spirit was hovering over it as a trans-dimensional gateway into heaven, um, you, you were made from that. Hey. So you're made from something that even nobody really fully understands what you're made of. <laughs> but somehow it's connected to our future that God had a plan in humanity to reveal his face into all of creation. Now for that to happen, we have to go with the natural progression of the gospel, that the gospel cannot be merely a salvation message, it has to be a transfiguration message. In other words, Jesus came that we might have life. 
Now, as you know, in John 10, 10, it says Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And what we've done is we've formed an alliance in the church with those things. We've said they're acceptable. When it says Satan, the demonic structure comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus says, come out from under that bench of three and come into this bench. I came that you may enjoy life. Zoe life, and Zoe life is God is God's quality of life, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other word, which I've told you before, is per, it sounds like peri sauce. It's peri sauce, <laughs> peri peri. So you put a bit of peri peri sauce into it, <laughs> which is the abundant life. Now the abundant life means above and beyond, beyond all that is necessary for requirement, superfluous, mm-hmm. exceptional. It's it's almost the same as kainos. It means a new form of life. Mm-hmm. So Jesus came that you may have joy. Life and a new kind of life. So if any man be in Christ, there is a new creation. Now many people have skipped death throughout the ages. Some people say historically a group of 60,000 people all went to find the new Jerusalem or Abraham city and vanished. Some people believe that the people who did the Dead Sea Scrolls were one of those communities. They all disappeared and left their books. Good bookkeepers don't do that. <laughs> But there are a number of people that have skipped death and, um, you know, it's fascinating discovering more and more of them. Okay, so let's just go for it. I'm just going to knock out some verses right at the start. Proverbs 12, 28. In the way of righteousness, there is life. Along that path is immortality. You can't argue with the scripture. It's the word perpetual life. There is no death. So there's a way called righteousness that has no death on it. Okay, Romans 8, 2. When you live in union with the anointed one, union, Jesus, a new law takes effect. The law of the spirit of life breathes into you and liberates you from the law of sin and death. And I've said before, why have we kept a kept a compromise on this because we believe God freed us from the law so we're not doing the mitzvahs are we the 613 mitzvahs nobody here doing that okay so you believe you've been freed from the law sin are you innocent yes there's a law of sin but why have we left the overshadowing in place why have we as a body as the church had a fellowship with death And the main reason is because a system called religion stood at the gates and set it up as a gatekeeper, saying through death you can enter in, through death you can go to heaven, through death you can see angels. By making those statements, it empowered death and gave it permission to function. So part of what this generation is doing is untangling the permission that's been given to it and framing up a new house, which is called, and a new law, which is called the law of the spirit of life. Now, we don't know a lot about the law of life. That's okay, because the key is is that we begin to walk it. It's also called in Psalm 16, the path of life. The path of chai is the word chai, which is a chet and a yod. And it basically means the bloody door. It's the door that Jesus' blood was put on, you know, the Passover. It means the Passover way. So there is a way called the Passover way. Just think about this, this astonishing reality of cancelling your appointment with death. (laughs) Just think about that as a possibility. Science is moving quickly towards it. Like I said, Google's spending 400 million a year on life expansion technology. And, you know, by 2020, I know 20, I can't remember if it was 30 or 40, life expectancy will be 200 going up to 500, right, on current shifts. But why should, we, why should we put faith? I don't mind science. I love science. Why should we put faith in that when we can have this way called the way of Chaim, the way of Chai, which is the way of life? See, I put, I put towards you two trees in the garden, the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. And there's always been a company of people throughout history that have eaten the tree of life. Now, I'm not saying we're all instantly going to become immortal, but I definitely believe in regeneration. Regenerating the bodies. Because I've met people that have regenerated their bodies. I've met an old woman who regenerated her face and neck. I've met other people like Nancy Cohen, crazy people, that, that defy the laws of logic. I've got another friend that hasn't aged for 16 years, hasn't um, grown older for 16 years, hasn't been ill for 16 years. And it was a spontaneous revelation that she had that she could live in life. So I think, like, think about this. Scripture says, arise and shine. 
What does that have in mind? Because what light do we carry? Scripture says the light that we carry. It says you have the light of life. Which means something fundamentally has to change. Because we've been saying for a long time, arise and shine. What is the gross darkness in Isaiah 60 that covers the earth? I do not believe for a moment it's a bad end times. I believe the gross darkness is simply this, the record of death. The record of death still covers the earth, this gross darkness. It's a darkness of death, it's the shadow of death. See, in that context it says arise and shine, which means there's going to be a manifestation. Surely there's going to be a manifestation if nations are going to come. So Paul said this, what we crave above all is to be clothed so that what is temporary and mortal can be wrapped completely in life. He actually qualifies it, not that I want to give up my body, I want my body to be swallowed up by something. He wants it to be swallowed up by the spirit of life. Yeah! Hey, hey, see, disturb me. That's what it means, disturb me with a wonder. See, it says in Hosea 3.5, you will tremble at his goodness in the last days. So... We're going to tremble at his goodness. And we are a community that's leaning into his goodness. Because with God, all things are possible. And the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former. And in this place, I shall give the ultimate peace and prosperity, declares the Lord of hosts. See, you are the house of his glory. And he makes his resting place glorious. You have to get the logic of the gospel that God wants to pour out his spirit on flesh. Because your spirit now is joined with his spirit. And you have the mind of Christ. You have a new heart, it says. He took away the stony heart, gave you a new heart. So where are we seeing the breakdown in the equation right now? In the body. We're seeing in the body. The battle is in the body. Jesus came in a body so that it could be stripped of its flesh and stripped of its old covering. He put it in skins at the beginning because it was a glowing translucent form of light so he gave seven layers of skin Jesus came and undid Adam and he had his skin stripped off at the cross so they could strip off the false covering of humanity and begin to release a new form of being on earth and the fruit of it was that the tombs were opened wow Listen, I know how challenging this is, but I'm living in yod heh vav mind, not mine. Because the more I'm in yod heh vav the more the logic of love produces the, the life in me. Because where is the logic of love in death? Those of you who have lost dearly loved ones, what would you do to save them? What would you do? See, and you be a merely human... How much more does God love? And how much more does God have a desire for death, for life to swallow death? Now, if this is what he's releasing into creation in our generation, then I want to participate in it. I want to participate in something that, you know, this is the thing we've said for years. God's going to do new things. But then when we say, like, God wants to bring mortality, it's like, oh, that's a step too far. But we pray, let it be on earth as there is in heaven. Listen, we're going to see evidence this year. I'm speaking it out of, of healings in your body. We're going to see evidence this year of regeneration. You know, we've been plowing this field, but we're going to see fruit from it. We're going to see energy miracles, and I, I believe regeneration. And I believe that we are going to see sicknesses and diseases begin to get swallowed up by life. Because we have to be glorious. The gospel is glorious. The gospel cannot be a mediocre message. It cannot be a a partial transformation. Like Bill Johnson says, the pattern of the fully renewed mind is transfiguration. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove God's will. See, we have to be renewed in our mind to prove something to creation. And I've had energy miracles. I've had supernatural miracles, haven't I, honey? Yeah. But I'm leaning more into it. If I have one day where I got it, or one hour, I'm, that's one hour more than I had. And I want to start to live in divine flow, divine grace, divine energy. See, because grace isn't just a condition, it's an influence. See, we're under grace, and that means we're under a condition of mercy and grace. An acceptance, unmerited favor, but it also means the divine influence on the soul. It also means the divine energy, energeo from God. 
to call to him for grace. And great grace was given on to them. You know, and I'm loving like what Trevor and Ros are doing. They're going for it with the gym, with their businesses, with rising higher. You know, I'm thrilled that your mum and dad, they've, they're clearing room for an art studio and your dad's going to do carpentry. You know, that is the right mindset. That is a mindset that believes my age is not my defining characteristic. That I'm beyond the definitions of my age. It's not too late for anyone to start to do something brand new that they've not done before or learn something. Because in Christ there are no human limitations. Okay. So the revelation I've had, are you guys okay? I've got, is that all the time I've got left already? I'll never get this message done. Okay. 20 minutes to go. All right. So I, I have seen something, and it's an unusual thing, and I'm going to try and explain it, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, is that we're, we are a ripple effect in space-time that changes the probabilities of what happens. What I mean by that is God has ordained sovereignty in man. That is the gospel that God did not, not withdraw sovereignty from man, but fully gave man choice. But what I've seen is this, is that the, the choices we make can create new realities in quantum physics. With the choices we make and the focus we have bend space-time. This is a true fact. We bend probabilities. So, for example, the cruise. I'll give you an example. I was Last year, I was with Godfrey Bill and John Scotland in Seattle. Godfrey was telling me about cruises, how cool they are. And I said, I'm going to do a cruise. And I just released it as a wave pattern into creation. Three days later, I was invited on a cruise. When we got, we, we saved up for a car. When we were at the actual car place looking at cars, I said to the Lord, Lord, I want some inheritance today. My phone goes off half an hour later. My dad calls me and says, I'm changing my Mercedes. Do you want mine? <laughs> See, this is, this is how we should function. And do you know how many times I've bent reality? Because you are a reality shaper, not a reality victim. See, we have to get away from this victim's mindset. This is why I'm fundamentally opposed to the bad end times. Because the bad end times narrative creates itself. In other words, you'll see what you want to see and get what you want to get. Yeah. Because you are co-creators. You are made in the image of Elohim. Yeah. You are made in God's image and you are the government of creation. So, you know, of course you're going to shape reality, but we're going to shape a different world. Yes. So as we step into something, it creates um, a, a quantum ease. Let me call it that. That's a new word that no one's ever used, okay? You create a quantum ease where it gets easier for the next person. Yeah. See, every technology in this room came through someone bending quantum realities. The seat you're sitting on, the light bulb, my iPad are all fruits of people bending the status quo and forming something from another world, from a higher order, which made it easier for each generation. So from the time Ollie was a little boy, he could use an iPad. It's easy. <laughs> That's what we have to do. We have to start creating a framework for our children and our grandchildren that has a different mindset on it about its relationship with life and death, with yod heh vav -Hey, Where it's not a salvation message, it's a union message where his life is your life and you are one with God. We have to end the era of songs that separate us from God. Because separation from yod heh vav -Hey is decay. So in him we live, in him we live. So to live, we have to be in. So our language has to be any language. It has to be that when we wake up in the morning, we go, I'm in you, you're in me. Your life is my life. Your strength is my strength. Your mind is my mind. Your thoughts are my thoughts. And you frame up a house called yod heh vav -Hey, a house, a strong tower that you, you are safe within. So you begin to co-labor with God to create a different world. <sighs> yeah. See, we may not be seeing all we dreamed of yet, but we are groaning. And that's a good sign. 
Because groaning is the beginning of bending those quantum possibilities. It is, it, is, it is a tension in the spirit that causes wave patterns and it causes things to change. It causes a ripple effect. Just think about this, that the byproduct of your life is rippling out into generations. How many generations? I mean, how many generations have come from you or will come from you? And or how many people will you interface with with a different overshadowing, a different spirit? The spirit of life. You have begun a cascade effect in essence that defies the logical probabilities. It breaks the rules of the space-time continuum and starts to form a new creation here. Hi. This is another reason I don't like the end times theology is because it removes all personal responsibility into the future and says you can't change what's happening. I love the fact that the people who are ascending into heaven are changing stuff all over the world now. This is why technology is breaking open. I mean, I met with someone just the other day they're starting a whole new currency across the Islamic world. And it was a blueprint that they got from heaven that's opening a door right into the core of Islam. See, that's discipling nations, creating cryptocurrencies, creating new paradigms. You know, and how did they come to me? Why did they want dinner with me? Because as you engage that realm, it bends. What happens? See, it says kings come to the brightness of your rising. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. What can we do if we just walk in the spirit of life? What would it look like to have energy that, that breaks the threshold of tiredness, breaks the threshold of decay, starts to renew your gums, your teeth, whatever, starts to renew your eyes? You know, I, I did a meeting and I went for people with, with glasses. And man, I, just, I took courage. It was hundreds of people there. The pastor didn't like me. They didn't get, take up an offering. They fell out over the fact I was there. So I just went lower. It was in South Africa, actually. I just went lower. And instead, I just went for miracles. And there was one... Okay, so 30 people had glasses, but one got totally healed. And they could see the fine print in the Bible. See, that's me saying I'm not going to accept something... And that's what we've got to have, is we've got to get a courage from God, the courage to believe the gospel. The gospel is a new condition of life. It is not a double portion. It is an abundant life, a Zoe life, a supernatural life. Whatever happens right now. See, I've broken from the, the, I've broken from the story that was being told about me. Yeah. When I was in church, I was the only guy my age that wasn't in the men of God's group. They had Mogs group, Mogs. Now, I love Jesus with all my heart, and I was so burning. I wanted to be in monks. I was the only guy who never got invited to it. When I said to the youth pastor, I said, I think I'm called to be a leader. I didn't mean leader. I just knew God was doing something on me, and it was like I didn't have language for it. He said, I don't think you are. But I defied that. I defied what they said about monks. I am going to be a man of God whether they want me to be one or not. Good job I wasn't in the Wogs group, women of God. But I would have gone to the Women of God group because I was so hungry for Jesus. <laughs> but I'd be one that's broken the human limitations that have been put on me over and over again. Because I will not accept a false covering. I will not accept a false overshadowing. I will not accept a false definition of a new creation. Yeah. Boom! Yeah. yeah. Okay. So John G. Lake said this, There is coming from heaven a new manifestation of the Holy Spirit in power. And that new manifestation will be in sweetness, in love, in tenderness, and in the power of the Spirit beyond anything your heart or mind ever saw. The very lightning of God will flash through men's souls. The sons of God will meet the sons of darkness and prevail. I had a dream the other day, I can't even convey it to you, it was so spooky and real, it was like HD. I was in a big arena and someone was preaching and literal lightning kept cracking through the roof onto this person's body. The awe of God in that room as the person was talking was unbelievable. See, I dare to believe for these things. It's, it's, see, the intoxication does bear fruit. <laughs> the intoxication is remember, is you drink in God's memories. Because remember, all that you taste in wine is the memory of a grape. 
So you can tell what elevation it was from, what country, whether it was red or white. You can tell what year it was because the, 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 the life experience of the grape is formed and crushed in the wine by the feet of people. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. By the feet of people, he was crushed so that he could release an intoxicated wine that would give us the remembrance and the memory of where he came from. So repentance means to remember, right? It means to come back to the divine remembrance. See, I remember light and I remember life. One morning I woke up and I was coming out of the light in my bedroom. I was in the light. I mean really in the light. I wasn't dreaming. I was there. Okay, so we're moving into these days where the old forms are collapsing, old definitions, old building, old denominations are passing away, but something very different is happening now. Everybody knows this, but we, this, God's starting to say what it looks like now. Finally, he's starting to say what his resting place is going to be like. His resting place is glorious, it says. His, ah! <laughs> hey. Disturb us, Lord. His resting place is glorious. Glorious. Wow. I'm in love with your body. See, Jesus came to save the body. That's the whole point of the resurrection. That's the whole point of a transfiguration. It's the gateway technology that you contain for all the creations waiting for the unveiling of the sons of God to free it from what? Decay. So the logic of every prophetic conference we've ever been where we're going, oh, we're looking for the freedom of the sons of God and people blow shofars and they wave flags and I love all that, but they've missed what the verse said. The creation's waiting for you to free it from death and decay. To put it another way, the first Adam had life, but he didn't have a life-giving spirit. The second Adam has a life-giving spirit. So what you've got inside you is a spirit that creates new realities. This is why this is like a powerful, powerful gospel. This is why Jesus left so that he could be embodied in us. So you will come with awe to the Lord's goodness in the last days, Hosea 3.5. The latter glory of this house will be greater. This truth, listen to this, 2 Timothy 1.10 in the Passion Translation. How many of you guys love the Passion Translation? Yeah. This truth is now being unveiled by the revelation of the anointed Jesus, our life giver, who has dismantled death obliterating all its effects on our lives and has manifested his immortal life in us by the gospel. Wow! That is tasty. There's some goodies in there. Shaka bam. We have to realize these, these are technologies. We're, we're talking about a manual for living. Literal, your word is a light and a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. You, the word has to penetrate. It says, I desire truth in your innermost being. So he actually wants truth to become flesh or the word to become flesh and dwell amongst us. In other words, these truths have to be eaten and form a resonance memory in your body. Oh. So we've got to realize who the bad guy is in the story. It says, Satan came to kill, steal and destroy. I came that you may have life. Okay, in the way of righteousness, there is life. He doesn't... Ah! And listen, there's no condemnation. Even if all of us die a natural death, that's okay because we're causing a wave pattern. Yes, right. We're causing a ripple in the, in the realm that begins to open up new possibilities. This is how the spirit works, to create a thing that it might be established. Yeah. So we're creating space out there in, in, the, in the consciousness, actually, of everyone around us. Right now, me just speaking this, in a realm, sitting on the mountain, it says it's been displayed, God's wisdom is going out to principalities and powers. The other day I was preaching and a group of angels with recording books came and I knew I was speaking not just for me, I was speaking in the courts into creation. See, that's what we do as the Ecclesia of God. You can whisper in your bedroom and it'll be shouted from the rooftops. And what we have to do is change what we're saying. We're the generation that said, has to discover life and death is in the turn. Which means we have to not complain, not criticise, because we frame up decay. And I know that's hard for all of us because we've not been 
We've not governed that part of our bodies, but this is the generation that's going to learn that life and death is in the power of the tongue. But who eats it? You eat the power of what you've spoken. That's why we decay, because when we speak of criticisms, when we speak of that, we frame up the wrong tree, because we're going back to the knowledge of good and evil. When we see someone through the lens of good or evil, we are seeing them through the wrong tree. See, the tree of life is a tree of innocence where it's not based on their performance. It's based on the image of the divine in yod heh vav that he made them before, he loved them before, and they... In, in, wow! That's why Paul said, I no longer see anyone in a merely human fashion. So I said last time that we did this, that John Paul Jackson got taken to the real throne room. I don't mean an ascension like we're having, where we often go up into heavenly realms in our minds and hearts. I mean the real throne room, where the prophets of old went, where they fall like dead men, where, it's, where you're so frightened by God. And there an angel came up to him. I, I fully believe this revelation because of the weight of how it came. Okay? The angel looked at me and said, the key to the next great move of God in the earth, listen to this, let it sink in, because none of the prophets are talking about this. I said this in the last tribe. I'm the only one that I know of that has read this and listened. But I believe that's because to him as he is to hear. Let him hear. So this is what I said, the angel looked at me and said, the key to the next great move of God on the earth is found in the book of Romans, and in particular chapter 4. Contained therein is an unembraced truth that will mark and distinguish this coming move from all other moves of my spirit. Okay, let me just pause. Let's just hear what just happened. John Paul, one of the most credible prophets of our generation, Enoch appeared to me in the former John Paul originally, had one time or two times, I think, where he actually went to the throne room. Not in a vision, he was there. Shielded by God so he could handle it, right? There he saw other things that were going on, but one of the key things, he was told there is a move of God coming upon the earth that will be unique, unique in all history. And the truth to what's, what will be in that move is hidden in Romans chapter 4. Now I've gone through Romans chapter 4 with a, with a, with a fine whatever you call it. <laughs> tooth comb? What is a tooth comb? <laughs> fine tooth. Okay, I've gone through it with one of those. And what I found is that you could see in there the Reformation embraced the bulk of it, which was the just shall live by faith. And we got it. Inside there, contained therein, is the gospel of grace that birthed the Reformation. But there's a truth hidden in it that no one ever preached on in the last 500 years. But it's now coming, not just from me, but from other people all over the earth are picking this up. Because this is what's been released. This is what's on the timeline. This is what heaven's speaking. And it's this. Listen to Romans 4. And not being in weak, weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. Oh, this is awesome. He did not consider his body already dead or old. You do not consider your body old or dead. No matter how sick it is. Since he was about 100 years old. So listen, you guys are spring chickens compared to him. Okay. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he didn't look at the fact that an organ had completely collapsed that wasn't working. He did not let that organ define him or his age define him. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. He was strengthened in his body, in faith, giving glory to God. I love the fact he took on his new name. He took on a different definition with the hay restored in it. The wonder disturbing his DNA. God put yod hey vav hey the hey into a DNA. Wow. wow. And being fully convinced. I love that. Fully convinced. Yeah. See, some of you here, you can take the doctor's report, but listen, you don't have to. Because that's a false covering, a false report, a false overshadowing. And if I had listened to the reports of men, I wouldn't be preaching this gospel right now, traveling all over the world. If I believed what that person told me, that I wasn't called to ministry. If I believed what it was like when I worked for Cardiff Council as an admin assistant. I didn't believe that. I believed that there was something greater. So
something more when I've seen money materialise in my hands. You know, we teleported on our last trip, didn't we? 20 minutes at the M4. Because I've been believing and framing up that I believe. Now, how many times have I driven from London and it not happened? More than I wanted to count. But I will not let my previous trips determine how often teleportation happens for me in the future. So, ah, I know I'm shaking it up. That's okay. It's okay. Okay, so fully convinced. I love that. Say fully convinced. That God was able to do what he promised, that he was able to perform it. What has he promised you? It says in 2 Timothy 1.10 that now the gospel of life and immortality has come. He says he wants to vibrate health and healing in your bones. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He wants you to be fresh and flourishing, the Psalms say, and full of sap. I mean, how many scriptures do we need to start to believe a different story? We Just plunge into the word and the truth will set you free. Dive into the spirit of life. Feast on the rivers of living waters. It will come up from in you and become a torrent of life. Therefore, it was counted to him for righteousness. So what was counted to Abraham as righteousness? Believing that God regenerates bodies. Let's break it down. He believed that God was going to regenerate his body and that was counted to him as righteousness. But listen to the next verse. It says, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us. I want to propose to you that that is the secret in Romans chapter 4 that no one's preached on until now. Because God is speaking a different story over this generation. You know, he's speaking life, strength, immortality. Whoa. As Patricia King said, some things that God will manifest in these coming days have never been done before. Things that will stretch our imagination and challenge our intellect. See, I'm believing these things now. I'm believing... (sighs) Okay, let's wrap this up. So Psalm 92 says... You have made me strong as a wild ox. You have anointed me with the finest oil. The godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. You've had a transplant. You have had a transplant. You have been transplanted into the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God in union. Growing in grace, they will thrive and bear fruit and prosper in old age. They will flourish and be vital and fresh. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain green. One translation says they will be healthy and fresh. They will declare, listen to this, the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no evil in him. So the fruit of regeneration is justice. This is the justice of God, that he scorns the enemy, that he breaks down the house that he's tried to put on us and establishes us as those who are evergreen. Okay, so he came that we may have life. So listen to this. This is Psalm 102. Never ever have you heard this spoken of. Verse 18. Hidden in Psalm 102, verse 18, is a secret for the end times. You've never heard anyone preach this. Get ready for this. This will be written for the generation to come. That's what it says. That a people yet to be created. So this is the psalmist saying, seeing through the timeline, that I'm writing this for a generation far in the future. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven and the Lord viewed the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner. To release those appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. So there is a promise hidden in Psalm 102 verse 18. That God saw through the timeline that there would be a generation yet to be created. That God would hear their groanings to free them from an appointment with death. That in other words, there's a generation who's going to get the answer. There's a generation who's going to get the response to the groaning that our bodies are experiencing. The travail that we're going through. There's a generation. Ah! Is, is, any, uh, is there a church in here? Yeah. 
talkie talkie come on now sorry we've been with the black guys like I said it's been awesome is there a church in here yeah. <laughs> okay so I'm almost done Psalm 16 my heart is glad and my glory rejoices did you hear that my heart is glad and my glory rejoices your glory see you're meant to be glorious you're meant to be glorious get over it get over the issues be glorious be the most glorious shimmering person that you know in your age range. Just have so much glam, so much glory, so much whack on you. You're meant to be glorious. Get, get, come out of the closet. Arise and shine. Just be the best, best, best shimmering, dazzling, blinged up person you can be, right? This is a good life. My soul is full of joy and my body is at rest. Get that? So joy is a technology. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. She's living in joy that creates strength in your body. That's why we have to come away from the gloom and doom narrative because that brings death. He, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you engage joy, your body's at rest. Even my body has hope, it says in Psalm 16. For you will not leave my soul in shale. You'll protect me from the power of death. And you will not allow your Holy One to undergo d decay. You will show me the path of life. Chaim, you will show me the bloody door. You know, <laughs> the blood soaked door where it says the shadow of death couldn't go through it. That's what Chaim is. It's a door which death can't follow you in. Oh. So you teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are at your right hand. Okay, now listen. I'm going to end with this. Job 33, there's a court case for re body regeneration. You've never heard someone preach this. <laughs> Blessed are your ears. Listen, you're hearing stuff. Fresh bread from heaven, right? Yeah. Job 33. Yeah. It talks about someone being ill, okay? A person may be disciplined by pain while in bed bones ever aching and until a person loathes food an appetite rejects delicacy no don't give me that cake <laughs> turn it away I'm ill the flesh wastes away no longer visible the bones once hidden protrude a life approaches the pit the very being draws near the death dealers ooh nasty death dealers but this is where it turns around this is how revelatory scripture is so that's the kind of report that you can get Let's break with that. It doesn't matter how bad it is. I remember William Branham. William Branham went to see this woman. I've got photos of it. Where she was so ill with cancer. She was literally a skeleton. And when she, he went to pray for her once. And they called him back again. The second time he came back. He was praying for her. And he suddenly had a vision of her being really fat and happy. Hanging stuff on the line. And he says, thus saith the Lord. She will live and not die. They went, brother Branham, surely not. Mark my words, she will live. And she came back like that. You know, another time he was in hospital, same thing, over and over again. Branham would do this. He would see a different timeline. See, we have to start to see a different timeline that's free of Alzheimer's, free of dementia, dementia and Alzheimer's. Let's break that lineage. Let's break that house of genetics in our lineage. Let's not allow that to have any framework or mode of existence around us. Let's be a new creation house. Okay. So this is where the prayer goes into courtroom. It says, surely there's a messenger for this person, a mediator in the courts, one out of a thousand, to declare one's integrity to another so that God has compassion on that person and says, rescue this one from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Well, wow, talk about new creation language. Yeah. You've got Job, which some people think is the earliest book of the Bible. And the, the, they're actually having a revelation. There's somebody speaking over someone that's dying that they're innocent, that a ransom's been paid. Yeah. How crazy is the Bible? <laughs> it's, ah, wow, wow, this is bonkers, man. Listen what it says. It says, that person's flesh is renewed like a child's. They regain their youth. Wow. So I think that's what happened to Job. Yeah. I do. I think that Job had a complete body makeover. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the other translation, CEV. Our health is restored. We feel young again. GNT, their bodies will grow young and strong again. 
HCSB. That his flesh will be healthier than in his youth. Healthier than when you were in your youth. ICB. I will return to the way it was when he was young. ISV. ISV. Rejuvenated. Return to ju Juven. Which means Latin for young. You're going to return to Juven. <laughs> Return to Juven. Yeah, we are going to be returning to Juven. They pray to God. Listen to this. And God is pleased with them. So the key's there. They pray to God and God is pleased with them. They behold God's presence with a joyful shout. They sing before people and say, I have sinned, perverted justice, but didn't experience the consequences. They sing this. This is an awesome song. Write this one down, Janine. I have sinned, perverted justice, but didn't experience the consequences. He ransomed me from the crossing into the pit. My life beholds light. That is actually a song in the Bible. That is a biblical song. Why would we be singing this song? It continues, it says, look, God does all this twice, three times with persons to bring them back from the pit to shine with life's light. So it's given you two, three times lucky in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to pray a court case today based on that promise, okay? We're going to pray... Just very quickly, and you could do more of this engagement because I, I'm showing you principles, but you've got to learn to engage it. But I think it's sinking in, right? Session 14 on life and immortality. This is a long series. It's called Perpetuity. Do you remember I talked about this? You know, it says in John 3.16, it says, I came that you may... You know, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him will not perish, but have life. Mm -hmm. The word life there is perpetuity, which means a life that hasn't got a beginning or an end. Mm -hmm. Which is the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. So he came to establish, and the order of Melchizedek is a body. Mm -hmm. It's a body. There's a priest and king. And who functions as a priest and king? We do. So what is the order of Melchizedek? It's a body. A body have I prepared for you. Okay. So let's stand up. Thank you, Father. Everybody okay? Yeah. Right. I know some of you have got sicknesses, diseases, all that other stuff. I believe that we are stepping into a, a, a time of regeneration. Okay? Regeneration from aging, regeneration from sickness and death, okay? Yes. Let's just engage us by faith. So, Father, today we step into the courtroom of heaven. We enter your courts, Lord, with joy and expectation that we will tremble at your goodness. Lord, we are those who believe what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross. And we come today and we can hold people in our hearts as well. We come in today and we honour the bench of three. We honour the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We honour that you are the counsellor uh, and the mediator. And you are the judge of all. We honour the cloud of witnesses that have gathered here to testify. I thank you for Enoch. I thank you for Elijah that didn't see death. Enoch and many others. Thank you for David. We honour them now. We look to the example. Men just like us. Women just like us. Men just like us. Women just like us. Thank you, Father. We honor today the angels and the seven spirits, the spirit of life. We honor today that there's a court and a justice system in heaven that we can enter into and contend today for body recalibration, for body alignment and rejuvenation. Lord, we present to you today the testimony of your words that it says that if that you abolish death, 2 Timothy 1.10, we call the testimony of Jesus Christ into the courtroom today. The faithful witness that you abolish death. You abolish death and obliterated all of its effects. We 
today call on, we may be the first group to do this, Psalm 102, where it says it was written for a generation far in the future that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord, that you would look down from the height of your sanctuary. We claim that verse today, that Yahweh, you would look down from your sanctuary and you would, you would have grace and love towards us and hear the groaning of the prisoner to release us from appointment to death. The Lord, we will not come under the false covering of sickness and disease or medical reports or any disease or any issues that we have. But we call on Zion today. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is our spiritual worship. We say, Lord, sanctify and quicken our mortal bodies. We ask for the frequency and the energy of life to come into our bodies this hour, this day, Lord, that we come under the law of the spirit of life. His mercy is anew every morning, and we're going to step into it every day. Every day in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we live, in Him we move and have our being, in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. The old has gone and the new has come. You are called to be unusual. Favor is on you. Favor is on you. God's creamy favor is upon you to create realities. You have the favor of God. Listen, I'm speaking this right from where I am in the spirit. You have the favor of God on you to create worlds. Prosperity is yours. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Great faith, great grace. Great faith, great grace. Great faith, great grace. Great faith. Old men will dream dreams. I don't think that just means they're having dreams at night. I think that means there's a renewal. That they're dreaming again. Well, Lord, we honor the courtroom today. We submit our papers. We submit our case before you. Let it be written in heaven this day that the ecclesia agreed. We agreed with what you're saying in the timeline. We agree with the testimony of Enoch and Elijah. We believe the spirit of Elijah. We believe for the seventh, which is Enoch, the completion. Thank you, Father. Let it be written that you found faith on the earth. You found believing believers in Wales this night. That we agree, 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 we agree. Thank you, Father. If two or three agree on anything, it will be done for them. Thank you, Father, for life, 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 life life. Amen.